at this video and that we give it up for those who have taken us on the journey so far this evening with outstanding spirit and culture Diageo Guinness USA is proud to be a partner with Face to Face and I say that solely because of the mission and that mission, that driving force of really changing the global community's image of what we as a people are about talent, culture, philanthropy, and most importantly at our core, love for mankind. There are no other people on this planet, ladies and gentlemen, that love more than we do. Just look at our history. At Guinness, we believe that behind every great achievement are great people. The Guinness Humanitarian Award is meant to recognize these great people whose actions define the true nature of their character and therefore to Boris and Nicole Kojo. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. spring chicken <laughs> but I just wanted to take a quick moment to let you know that you have done more for the self-confidence of black girls all over the world than you will ever know true 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 beauty um, thank you face to face for this amazing award we're truly honored um, thank you for creating a platform that empowers Africa the only way that's possible through its people, through technology, and through content. Um, Sophie was born in 2005, and when she was born, we had absolutely no idea what we were dealing with. We had never heard of spina bifida, which by the way is a birth defect, not a disease. And um, we spent the next months sitting by the computer for 20 hours a day just trying to figure out what this spina bifida thing was. We met with all the experts all over the world and we reached out to families who were afflicted with the same situation and found so much support, so much love from all over the world that it made us heal quicker and it made us realize that we needed to create something for all these people to get together and uh, connect. And that's how it's Sophie's Voice was born. Yes, in 2008 when, when we started Sophie's Voice Foundation, it was pretty much a selfish act to connect with other people because sometimes it's the feeling that you're the only one or you're isolated that makes the situation even more troubling. So Sophie's Voice Foundation was a way for us to connect with other families that were, were dealing with spina bifida in the wide spectrum of the way it manifests. And so through that process, like my husband said, uh, we received our own healing and then once, we could say once we got strong, we realized that we had an opportunity to really help other people. So we tried to keep our finger on the pulse of what was happening in medicine. We tried to keep our finger on the pulse of what was happening not only with preventing spina bifida and other neural tube defects, but also going global. And so it always surprises me when, when an organization like Face to Face reaches out because when you do this kind of work, you never think about getting an award for it. You know, there's such an immediate need to be met and, and sometimes it's just stepping up and, and trying to, to meet that need that uh, makes all the difference. So when my husband, my husband's from Ghana, and he spent a lot of time. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Okay. 
Mr. Ofwate Kojo. Uh, I'm thinking about changing my name, y'all. Come on. <laughs> right now. About time. Ten years. Come on. And uh, so we really tried to uh, take that next step and and find out what was going on in Africa because with the work with Emory, we were getting numbers that say things like the the number of of, of children diagnosed with spina bifida and other neural tube defects was was quite high and very close to American numbers, but there was no tracking of it because the mortality rate was double. So there was, there was no way to track how to improve the quality of life once you got diagnosed and how to supplement uh, the prevention of some of these preventable defects. So, um, you, want, you want to talk about Yeah, as we were traveling through Africa, we found what she just mentioned and also that the key was education and prevention. And how we tackled the issue was we went into a country like Nigeria, for instance, met with the government, met with the health ministry, corporate leaders, as well as the press, and basically forced them into committing to fortify rice and flour, which is the only way in Africa to solve the problem. Because when women automatically ingest, when they ingest flour and rice, they automatically protect it uh, from birth defects such as spina bifida. So we used our celebrity shamelessly in meeting all these heads of states because they wanted to have lunch with us or dinner with us and basically bamboozled them into committing to fortification in their country. And it worked. And the astounding, uh, the, the amazing thing is that once a country co uh, commits to fortifying flour and rice, within six months the numbers drop by 50 percent. Wow. So it's a, it's a very, um, it's a remarkable impact that fortification has. Um, when I traveled to South Africa, I just got back two months ago, I visited one of the hospitals there and I was astonished how comprehensive the care was, even better than in most places here. So there's progress and there's uh, a lot of goodwill, a lot of, a lot of people that work really, really hard uh, in various African countries. And uh, so we made it our mission to eradicate spina bifida worldwide within the next 10 years. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for having us. I wanted to thank Face to Face. I wanted to thank um, my husband for staying married for 10 years. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> I don't know what he just did. I say that with a smile on my face because um, you know, we went from being a Hollywood couple to having our priorities shift very quickly. And, and I'm grateful that you managed to, to hold hands through this journey and to be here with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.